All right, and we're back for questions from the, uh, the test set of practice questions. And we are working on section 4.4 here. Uh, this one starts at question 10 from the, from the test set. And it just says to evaluate. So that means find the value of log base 2 of 8 to the 33rd. Apparently, apparently I was being a little cruel when I was thinking about this question and if I should give it to you or not. This one just takes, you know, it's got big numbers in it, and it just takes a little bit of work. Um, but it's not too bad. So what we're gonna do for this one is we're gonna we're gonna utilize some of those rules of logarithms to help us compute this. The first rule that we're gonna use is that when you've got a power like this inside your logarithm, that's the same as multiplying the logarithm by that power. So 33 times the logarithm, but without the power. So the power just becomes 1. So it's just 8 here. We just take that power and drop it down in front. That was one of the properties or the laws of logarithms. So now we don't need to know what log base 2 of 8 to the 33rd is. We just need to know what log base 2 of 8 is. And then whatever that is, we multiply by 33. So now, can we figure that out? Well, log base 2. Well, 8 is just 2 to the third. If you just watched the previous video on doing problems from 4.3, we graphed log base 2 of x. And 2 to the third was something that we plugged in. And that was 8. So knowing your powers of your base, it's, it comes in handy here. Now we can just use the same rule, can't we? Or we can just use the definition of log. These have the same base, right? 2 and 2, the exponential and the logarithm. So that means if we evaluate log base 2 of 2 to the third, this is just power. It's just 3. So this equals 33 times 3. 33 times 3, if I'm not mistaken, is 99. Okay. Uh, I can see on the recording. We can't quite see that. That is 99. Okay. So yeah, quite a few steps here, but really it's just, uh, just one application of a law for logarithms, bringing the powers down of the arguments inside and then evaluating. That's just definitions of logarithms and the property of logarithms. And then some multiplication. All of this you can do without a calculator. The big numbers, they're just there to scare you. So the next question from 4.4 is to expand a logarithm. So 11 says, expand the expression log base 2 of s to the fifth over 7t squared. Um, yeah, so section 4.4 uh, was the section where we learned about all the laws of logarithms. One of them I showed you up above. We're going to apply that same law here in a bit, but first we're going to deal with this fraction. So when you have a logarithm of a fraction, you can rewrite that. You can expand that as two logarithms in a difference. So it's going to be the logarithm of something minus the logarithm of something. The first argument is whatever's in the numerator. So that's here, s to the fifth. The second argument is whatever's in the denominator, which is 7 times t squared. So now we can rewrite this first one as 5 times the log base 2 of 5, uh, excuse me, <laughs> of s. Okay, I gotta make this corner sharp so that you know this is a 5 and not an s. And this is curly, which means it's an s, not a 5. Okay, minus something else. 
Now, there's another law that says if you've got a product in a logarithm, you can expand that as a sum of logarithms. So we're, we have a subtraction here, and we're going to be subtracting a sum. So there's, there's one necessity here. We need to sort of put a grouping symbol and then put the sum inside it. Okay, because we're subtracting the sum. We're not subtracting the first piece of the sum, we're subtracting the whole sum, because the whole sum is equal to this expression. So what do we do? We take log base 2, keep the same base, and the first argument is one of the factors. So there's two factors here, 7 and t squared, so we pick 7 and put it there. Log base 2 of the other factor is here, which is t squared. Okay, so now we're almost done. We're going to distribute the negative sign. So this is minus log base 2 of 7. There's actually nothing to do for this one. And then we have, we have minus log base 2 of t squared. Let's apply this other, this other rule where we've got a power that we can, we can bring down. So this is minus 2 times log base 2 of t. And that's fully expanded. I see no other products. I see no other quotients. I see no powers of things inside the logarithms. So this is the full expansion and the final solution to this question. Okay, so this initial logarithm expression is equal to this one, and this one is fully expanded. So that is question 11. The next one, question 12, uh, says combine the expression. And we're given something like this, and we're asked to combine it back. So using those laws in the reverse order. So here's the expression that we want to combine back together. It's 2 log of x minus 3 log of x plus 1. Yep, I'm just making sure I didn't put a base there. So I, I didn't write a base, which means that these logarithms have base 10. Right? If you see log with no base, it's implied those are base 10 logarithms. That's just a convention, something that people do, because this is a very commonly used logarithm. In fact, it's called the common logarithm. If you see ln of x or something, that's the natural logarithm. It has a base e, Euler's number. And again, if you see log written like this, lg, that's base 2. Okay. Uh, I, on the test, won't write anything but log or ln, or if I don't write one of those, I'll, I'll explicitly say what the base is. Okay. So we want to combine this back together. So that means we need to use these rules before uh, in the reverse order. So we'll handle this first one, this first term, 2 times log base x. Well, this multiplication by 2 in front means that the power of what was inside the logarithm must have been 2. So let's put it back. <laughs> so log of whatever is inside the logarithm squared. So there's just an x there. So let's just write it as log of x squared. Okay. Minus the 3 times log of x plus 1. That means whatever was inside the logarithm had the power of 3, and that 3 was just brought down in front. So this is log of everything that's inside of it, which is x plus 1, to the third power. Okay. That's it for that step. The next and final step is just the reverse of what we see, uh, what we saw up here, right in this step. Uh, excuse me, right in this step. We took a logarithm of a quotient and we wrote it as a difference of logarithms. So here we see a difference of logarithms 
we can rewrite that as a single logarithm of a quotient. What goes on top? Well, that's the thing from which we are subtracting. So that's the first term here. So x squared, the argument of that one goes there. What we are subtracting determines what goes in the denominator of our quotient. So we put here x plus 1 cubed because we're subtracting the logarithm of x plus 1 cubed. So we put this x plus 1 cubed in the denominator. And that is it. That is the full combination of what was written there. So we still have an equal uh, expression for all values of x. These, give, these will give the same value. And uh, this one is fully combined. Whereas the first, what we were given, was fully expanded. Um, and that's it for section 4.4. Uh, so from this section, it, it's really just working with uh, exponentials and logarithms and the different laws of those things. Okay, so I hope that helped. Uh, if not, shoot me an email. Uh, I'm happy to do some more. I'll be back in a minute for uh, problems from section 4.5.